Hi everyone, I'm Ellie, founder of Code of the Future, and today I'm going to be telling you why you don't need a computer science degree to start learning how to code. So I'm gonna dive straight into the video and tell you my five points. So point number one is that you don't actually need any degree to start learning how to code. You honestly don't. There are so many resources out there. It's literally as simple as learning how to ride a bike, picking up a book and reading it. You don't need any degree, you don't need any qualification to learn how to code. There are so many resources on YouTube. That's why I do this channel, to give people free resources and, and teach people how to code without the fee of having to pay for, for a specific course. So you don't actually need any qualification to literally start learning. There are free resources online. YouTube is perfect. Google, just Google any programming language that you're interested in, you want to learn how to code, there will be so many resources for you to learn how to code. I understand that if you are someone who has friends that do compute a computer science degree, you may be doing a different type of degree and it may be disheartening when you're learning how to code and, and they know all these incredible things in, in their degree. That's absolutely fine. Everybody's coding journey is completely different. You don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. You're doing it for you at the end of the day, so you don't need to worry about what anybody else is doing. Just focus on you, focus on what you want to learn. Go find resources that are perfect for you. There are so many out there, so there will be one that is perfect for you. You've just got to learn to enjoy the process. So point number two, why is it that I've mentioned computer science degree? might seem a bit intuitive, but I want to compare it and show you that you can learn exactly what people are learning on a computer science degree. So computer science degrees are great because they offer so many different modules, uh, different classes on different areas of coding. But what most people don't realize is you can learn those things online yourself. So you could go to a university website or a college website and find a specific computer science degree. You can have a look at the breakdown of their modules and what's included in those modules and then you can teach yourself those specific things. So I would say that yes, it's, it's great if you have a computer science degree. Um, there are other things that you can go into with a computer science degree, but what you learn on that degree, you can actually learn outside of it as well. So you can, you know, maybe make friends with somebody who does a computer science degree. They may share their lecture notes with you. There are tons of resources online that will allow you to learn something very similar to what people on a computer science degree do actually learn. So that's point number two. I would say that don't see those degrees as superior people. It's great that they are learning that, you know, absolutely incredible, but there's lots of areas that you can learn as well that are similar to that specific degree. So don't get disheartened. Don't think that you will never have the knowledge of someone who's done a degree. Remember that you can learn as much as you want and you can expand your knowledge as much as you want. So I say don't get disheartened by those degrees because you can learn exactly what is in them. Point number three, and this is an example of mine. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in, an, in any of my other videos. So I did a Python module at my university. So I study maths at university. I don't study computer science, which may seem a bit of a shock to other people. I know some people have always thought I did computer science, but I actually study maths. And as part of my maths degree, we did a computer science module and I absolutely loved it. That's what sparked my interest in coding. Just, yeah, absolutely loved it. And essentially after I did that module, I was like, okay, and maybe I want to go and do software engineering, something like that, something along the lines of coding at that specific point. So this was two years ago now, I believe, and I'd gone for an interview for a software engineering internship, and I basically just talked about this one module, and I'd learned pretty much the basics of Python. I hadn't learned masses of, of information. It's pretty much what my, um, it's probably less than what my beginner Python series teaches on this channel, I would say but it had a more maths emphasis on it. So I had done this one module, went to this software engineering internship interview and I was successful and I got offered the role. It was sadly canceled due to COVID, but you know, equally I was still offered this, this position, this our software engineering internship. And that was all because of one module that as I said, doesn't even cover absolutely everything in Python, but because I loved it and because I expressed interest in it, I think that's why they hired me and said, yeah, we'll give you, give you the role because I had had a taster of Python and you know, at that time only Python, I hadn't even explored other coding languages. And I think the fact that I was enthusiastic about it, they knew that I would work well in their team because I would continue to enjoy everything they taught me and everything that I learned on the internship. So I wouldn't be disheartened if you are going to apply for software engineering internships, if you are at university and you don't have major coding experience. There are a lot of places out there which will say you don't need to know masses, but a bit of knowledge of this program language will be really helpful. And I noticed a lot of them specifically said Python, which is another reason that I teach Python on this YouTube channel, because a lot of companies do look for it. 
So that's an example of how you don't need to know absolutely everything in coding. I knew one program language at that point with very little experience and I still landed a software engineering internship. So don't be disheartened. If you go for an interview and you don't have masses of experience, just say that you absolutely love it and show your enthusiasm because the company will definitely know that you will enjoy being in that specific role and you will embrace everything that they teach you. So point number four, although a lot of jobs do require a technical degree, there are lots of jobs now that are opening up that are made for career changes. So you may be currently in a, in a role, say you aren't at university, say you're currently in a job and you're thinking, this has got nothing to do with coding, there's no way I'm going to get a job in coding. That is so wrong. There are so many jobs now that are opening up for people like those. There are so many courses that are online that are for career changers that are wanting to change their career to coding. I was quite surprised. I never really understood what they meant to begin with, but I see it now. You know, if you're in a, in a job and you're thinking, I don't like this, I absolutely hate it. Um, you know, I want to, to learn how to code, but I'm scared and I, and I really want to go into, you know, software engineering job, but I don't know how to code. There are so many resources online and so many courses you can take as a person in a job to then transition to, to a job that's in coding, which I think is phenomenal. And I think the people that are offering those schemes are great, I think, especially those that are free, because it just allows you to, you know, not have that added pressure of I must stay in this specific job that I'm in for the rest of my life. It offers you, you know, a new chance and a new change. So although a lot of graduate jobs you know after university or college will require technical degrees there are also a lot of jobs that are offering career changer jobs which i think is incredible so i thought i'd mention that in this video if you aren't at university and you are in a job go search for career changes because it allows you to transition from the current role that you're in into a coding job L allows you to learn how to code on the job uh, and get paid for it as well so point number five i've mentioned it a few times in this video already if you're interested in learning how to code and you're wanting an easy pace towards it, I have a beginner Python tutorial series on my channel. I go from, you know, the absolute beginnings of downloading, installing, just showing you some basic operations. And I also have some other beginner coding videos on this channel. So facial recognition, which is completely beginner. So facial recognition, automated messaging, just a whole range of different things on this channel. And I'm hoping to release a whole range more as well over the coming year. So if you're interested and you want to learn how to code and you're a little bit nervous about not having any experience, don't worry. You know, I was from a math degree myself. I hadn't learned any coding before one module at university. And now I've sparked an interest and I've taught myself so many, so much coding. So yeah, don't be disheartened if you're not studying a computer science degree. That's the main point I'm trying to make in this video. You don't need to be studying a computer science degree to end up with a job in tech. It helps, but it's not a necessity. And that's what I think a lot of companies are realising now is that they're bringing a lot of other you know, STEM related degrees, but also career changes as well. They're bringing in roles that allow you to, to join even without having studied computer science. So don't be disheartened if you're not studying that type of degree, there'll be a way for you to land a software engineering job or just a tech job in general. Keep your head up high, keep learning how to code and just keep enjoying the experience and hopefully uh, a perfect job for you will come along hopefully in the near future. So that has been the video today. If you enjoy the video, please like, subscribe and comment. As I say in all my videos, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. This channel is growing quite fast recently, which is incredible. I, I, I still can't believe how fast it is growing. It's been this dream of mine for a long time and, and to see how much it's grown in the last year has been phenomenal. So thank you to everyone who does watch my videos. If you want to support me even more, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button. And there also is a donation page in the description section as well. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.